coming up on Theater Talk. And Lewis, when did you become a multimillionaire? It was when I began the, the, my first heroin sales. Oh, no, uh, no, I was no, able to no, sell no, something no, in my no, apartment. No, no, and, uh, no, no, And then we put on small shows, <laughs> public shows. It took the drug money invested <laughs> into show business. That's uh, <laughs> Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm producer Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. Uh, now, Susan, you and I have some favorite guests over the years. We love to have Tim Rice on and Elaine Stritch and Frank Langella. <laughs> and we're very happy that we brought two of our favorite guests, really, of all time back, who made us laugh so hard a couple of years of ago. Of all time? They oh. are two of the funniest people on the planet. We want to welcome back to Theater Talk the great Nancy Giles. Oh, my welcome. goodness. Thank and you. the equally great Louis Black. <laughs> welcome, welcome back. And Louis <laughs> is here to flog a play that I know he's yeah. trying to bring New York to New York, and he thinks by being on this show, yeah, this will you're going to get some around. backers. Is that what's going to oh, happen Oh, yeah, this here? will flip it all around. <laughs> the play is called they're A race, One... They're racing to the phones as I speak. <laughs> they don't even know the title yet. No, right? they don't have to know the title. <laughs> Just that you're involved. That's, That's enough. All. That's it. It's called One Slight Hitch. I think it begins in Seattle, and it, you're trying to get it here to the St. Well, George? No, I'm, well, it comes to the George Street Theater. George Street Theater. Uh, we, we do it in June in, in Seattle at the A Contemporary Theater, right. and then... Uh, it goes to the George Street. It's, it's supposed to open there. It'll open there in October. Right. That's right. enough for the plugs because we want to get to some jokes <laughs> here. Um, we had, I want to ask you guys something. We had our old friend Rob Bartlett, who's also a comedian and yes. on the Imus show, on not too long ago. And Rob does a lot of Broadway shows. And he told me when he was growing up that he just dreamed of being an actor and being on Broadway. And that he fell into comedy because he had to make a living and the acting career wasn't taking off. And I want to ask you guys, because I know you both have theater background, that must have been what you really wanted to do. And you must have a Lady Macbeth in you. You must have a Hamlet in you. <laughs> and here you are on the tail end of the business doing this comedy business, this stuff. You know, it's so interesting that he said that because that is kind of what happened with me. I mean, I, I always wanted to do theater. I started out doing Second City in Chicago and loved it. And that was kind of how I started learning that I could really write, write on my feet. Um, but I yearned to be in shows with other people. And... You know, I don't know if I stink at auditions or what, but like I couldn't get in things. And so I started creating my own material. Actually, that's how I met Lou. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was one of the people who said, you're funny. I heard it was because you, you had a reputation you couldn't work with other people. <laughs> 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 I mean, I just I'm picked so that demanding. up. So. You know, you want to be, I want to be in things with people. Right. I yearn to, and Lou is one of the people, one of the people in my life that I, that's consistently put me in things with people. Yeah. So for that, I'm very grateful. Just, just as an experiment. <laughs> 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 and it really didn't well, work. Well, it'll be like a pizza dish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can she relate? Can she laugh? Yeah, you know? No, but it is. It's a weird. It is, Isn't it? It's always weird. I mean, you know, and when you sit on, I mean, a, 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 as a writer, you sit on the other side and they come in and audition. And, you, you know, you, you kind of realize over time partly how it works, which has nothing to do with the way someone could come in and be spectacular and has nothing to do because you got nine people and that person is is not going it's, to, it's a family or it's something and right. it's not going to fit. There's right. a puzzle that you deal with in terms of casting. Uh, I'm thrilled that you think there's a Hamlet in me. And I, <laughs> I, that was, that's, this is your big moment. Literally, it was like someone electroshocked me. Uh, I'll be putting it, it's going on my resume. <laughs> did, did you ever aspire to serious acting? I mean, real classical no, I, acting? No, I, I aspired to be a playwright. I, that was really what I wanted to be. And yeah, that was a mistake. No, but, it wasn't. <laughs> but a certain... No, no. When I knew, when I first met Louis, was doing plays and doing, like, I wouldn't have even called it stand up. Don't say anything. I, I, <laughs> by that I mean, by that I mean, they were funny, rambling stories. <laughs> yeah. and, and it was, and, and it was just, it was very unique at the West Bank Cafe in, in Midtown Manhattan. Mm -hmm. There was this wonderful theater space. Steve Olson owns it. And Lou and Rusty McGee and Rand Forster just created this really great, safe space to create all kinds of things. So that's how I knew you, and it was like the, the two sides of Lou, the like, the serious twisted playwright, right. and then the seriously twisted <laughs> man on stage <laughs> rambling and screaming, yeah, it you know? Was, it was, but I really did, uh, I really started, I wrote, I mean, I was, I wrote one act, so I, I'd had a really successful play uh, when I was in college that, that actually we, uh, we did it, we got the Arts Council down there when I was still in school, uh, to, to fund our, a tour of it, 
And everything about it, and, and I'll never forget it, everything about it, I was sitting in the audience one night, and it would get standing ovations and all of this. I was 22. Uh, there was, we, and, I, and I sat with a friend, and I said, this is as good as it's ever going to be. We're, I'm done. <laughs> it's never going to be better. It doesn't matter if it's Broadway. It doesn't matter where I am. This is why you do this, and nothing will ever be. How, it, this doesn't happen every time. Well, now that, it's just going to be. But that wasn't right. It's been there've been good things since. No, there've been there've been there, there've been. Talk to me. Tell been, me. No, there, there've been some <laughs> nice things. What yeah. was the name of the play, by the way? That first play. The name of that play was called Feast. Oh, a revival's coming on. I can feel it right now. Yeah, when they're looking for those 60s plays. Now, I, want to, I want to ask you guys, you are, you know, when you're starting out in the business, you're not making any money, right? You're not getting paid to be at the West Bank doing this kind of that stuff. That doesn't change, actually, as time goes on. <laughs> but I was going to ask you, is it, there's always got to be a moment in a career like yours where suddenly somebody pays you more money than you've been paid for everything else. Do you remember in your life that in your lives, that line that you suddenly crossed and thought, wow, I am actually earning money for doing this. Well, for me, it was when I when I did television the first time, when I did China. Oh, oh no, yeah. you know what? Actually, no. Before that, when, the first time I got a check and I knew I was able to make a living by acting was when I did this wild little off-Broadway play called Mayor about Mayor Koch. Oh, War on Life. And Mayor was fun. And um, it was a really great experience. But what was even more fun than Mayor was doing this free show after that that Warren wrote at the West Bank called Oh, You Hostage. Yeah. This was when hostages could be funny. Right. At that <laughs> wonderful, you know, the salad days of uh, terrorism. Yeah, yeah. Terrorist jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but you got that check from yeah, Mayor. Yeah, that I was Remember wild. how much that check, what, what were they paying Oh, my that? gosh. So this was off-Broadway. We were at the Village Gate, and I think it was 400 bucks a week before taxes and Productions, but I was able to uh, to live, and it was it's a very heady thing. And Lewis, when did you become a multimillionaire? Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> really, it, uh, it was when I began the, the my first heroin sales. Oh uh, no! I was no, able to no, sell no, something no, in my no, apartment. No! And, no! Uh, no! And then we put on small shows. <laughs> puppet shows. You took the drug money, invested <laughs> it into show business. That's uh, <laughs> the thing that first came to mind. Was I did Hannah and her sisters. Oh, uh, oh we, we, right. And it, we had, uh, I had like three weeks on that movie, which was, for me, I mean, I probably made in the three weeks what I made, uh, I made more in the three weeks than I made in the probably the two two years before. <laughs> I mean, I was not making, I was compl I was stone cold broke until I was 40. <laughs> and this really, this really was the first kind of like, oh, and then the best, because I didn't really understand it, was... Uh, you, I did the movie, and then like, uh, and then the movie came out. It was uh. gone from my mind, and then all of a sudden, I wake up one day, and I'm like, and I've and I've got to go see a dentist, right? And this is the way it always works when you're broke. I've got to see a dentist, and I have no cash to do that. And I go downstairs, and there's a residual. <laughs> and I go, I'm like dancing around. It's like, yeah, yeah, I've got it. I'm triumph. And but it always happens. The way it works is you either either the either the che but you, usually the way it works is the check comes, and you get all excited, and then you go upstairs, and they call, and the dentist calls, and goes, "Well, you're going to have to come in, and we'll just take that check." It's like. <laughs> They watched me pick the check up. Oh, what, oh, oh, you know what's sad? And the other thing is when, because I, I haven't done movies in a long time, is when you do get one in the mail and it's so exciting and you dance upstairs and you open it up and I actually save these checks when it's for four cents. I mean, that they took the time to like issue you a check and put the damn stamp on and it's for, you, you know, what? Yeah, it's yeah. so sad. You know, I love Hannah and the Sisters, but I have no memory of you in that movie at all. Well, that was because it was a breakthrough. I'm <laughs> I'm transformational. Uh, I really did. I played. Uh, You're one of the. It was that like one of the assistants to I Woody Allen, assistant, right? And my hair was really, really long. It's an unbelievable scene. Christian Clemens is in that scene. John Turturro is in that. Julie scene. Louis Dreyfus. Uh, J T. Walsh mm. was in that scene. You watch. None of us, I think, <laughs> had a job. It, it ever really had a job. So everybody was just coming to New York, and it's like bam, bam, and, he, and that's the whole scene. Every one of those people goes on to an unbelievable career in film, and I just happened to go into a basement again. <laughs> sent me right back to the basement. It was not a break. But 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 it was you great. Remember, you it brought, you you really raised the bar in the basement. Yeah, it was like yeah, the big yeah, cheese yeah, in the basement. Yeah, really. I want to ask you guys something because you've been um, performers in the city a long time, and you have seen how this city has changed. And I'm working on a book now about Broadway in the late '60s and. 70s when the industry was in trouble and New York was in trouble 
But it seems to me that when you could afford to live in this city for a reasonable amount of money, you could attract people such as yourselves who weren't making any money. This city is now Beverly Hills. Oh my you worry God. that's going to kill the kind of arts and culture and world that you guys c came up in? Well, I hate to say it because in a way, I, I don't like to feel old enough to have been there when things were the way they were, but I am, and yeah, I mean, Plays and musicals cost so much to produce, and there seems to be this need to put, you know, big stars mm -hmm. in leads. And I don't begrudge them. Some of them came from the theater. Mm -hmm. Some didn't, and that's that's pretty stinky. But, um, <laughs> you know, and then ticket prices are really, really, really expensive. And as you said, you you can't live. I don't live in Manhattan anymore. I live in Weehawken. And you're successful. I, well, well yeah. thank you. Well, yes, I am. And I am. <laughs> oh, and, um, are. Let me just think about that and throw it over to Lou and just sort of, <laughs> no, but you uh, are. marinate you, I mean, you, but, but you but know what? There's voice is... Th that's no. how I, I don't that's make my... You're an iconic voice. Yeah. Thank you're you. You're a commentator thank on you. CBS. Yeah. Up to your doctor. Yes. <laughs> and, and, but, but, you know, the kind of creative atmosphere that we had at the West Bank, that's not really around in the same don't way well, it, well, Don't there you is, think that's off in Brooklyn and around, that that's I, still that's around with young people? It's huge, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it is. Yeah, it's, it's, out, it's in the outer boroughs yeah. more, yeah. I Eugene, think. Eugene, yeah, I know in terms of stand-up, it's like, uh, it's all over the place. E Eugene Mir Mirman, who's a, Merman, who's a great, kind of runs, has been running this thing for five years out of this, in Brooklyn and in nowhere Brooklyn. and. Now all of those pla all those places in Brooklyn, which had no names, have names. Right, right. Uh, they, the, um, the Upright Citizens Brigade really yeah. h has survived, and, and people go in there and rotate and do shows, and uh, and I and I don't even know there there is that, and now they and so they so the kids are forced to move further out. Right, but don't you think? But the kids keep coming, and they're yeah, going to keep working. I have a uh, an abiding faith that. Uh, in the idealism of young people to do theater no matter what and uh, and it really is and it gives me such joy uh, when I watch someone my age with the same kind of bright face coming in here to do it and knowing that they too will get it in the teeth just <laughs> <hard>. <laughs> I can't tell you. But <laughs> I was going to say, this better be going in that direction. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. Gonna be, I'm so bitter. <laughs> I'm, the best I'm sick of them. Get out of my way. I don't want you here. Go. You know. It's why I do theater benefits. I understand. <laughs> I'm going to keep them rolling as long as I can. I, fun, I, I go out on the road and stand up. and Yeah, you want to check? Keep it running. Keep it going. <laughs> Come to New York to make your living. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, all right, guys, so let's turn you into critics just for a minute, because I know you love the theater so much. You're always there. Um, Lewis, there's an interesting new play called The Columnist with um, uh, John Lithgow about a, a very powerful a political columnist who's been forgotten, Joseph Alsop. Now, I know you're uh, a student of politics and love politics. What do you know about Alsop? I know that he was a <laughs> <laughs> I know that he was really a <laughs> and, and the reason I know it was because I was... One of the reasons I kind of have some some real sense of, in, of who he is is because I was born and raised around Washington, D.C. Right. And he, he was a big cheese. And he was a big cheese there, and, and he was uh, one of those guys. He's a, it, basically, you, you don't call, I wouldn't call him a conservative columnist. He was kind of like, uh, um, he was like a Walter Winchell. Oh, okay. A, a yeah. mean spirit, even more mean spirited than Walter <laughs> oh, Winchell man. about politicians yeah. and uh, nasty. And there was a time when, there, which doesn't exist now, sadly, um, where where you had guys, you had columns in the Post and and really around the country of guys who's who were muckrakers who basically right. kind of Evans he, and Novak, remember those guys? Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah. And Evans and Novak were a cut above. Joseph Alsop was <laughs> just unreal. <laughs> so I always kind of remember him as like uh, you know a scary. Just, you know. Because in this play, um, uh, it, it deals with a real issue in his life, which was he went to uh, the Soviet Union in the 1950s, and he was gay, and he had Who a... Who was sleeping with him? <laughs> Who's going to sleep with Joseph Alsop? I mean, I saw him. That is so unjust. No, it's As a unbelievable. single woman, I'm offended. No, I'm no, offended. I, I mean, it's unbelievable. He had a guy friend. He had a boyfriend. How? I don't know. And in the 50s. <laughs> how? How? Would, well, here's what happens. So he goes to the Soviet Union. He's in Moscow, and he picks up this cute, young Russian Cossack, I guess. They go off and they have a tryst and the KGB calls him into the office and they show him the pictures and they're going to blackmail him. And he walks right over to the American embassy and he says, I'm being blackmailed. So now he's become a hero because he didn't submit. 
you, gay blackmail, Lewis. Wow. How do you feel about that now? Wow, that's it. Still bothers me. <laughs> it really, it does. It bothers me. What do the pictures me. look like? I and that I th so it makes sense. <laughs> the Russians sent a guy to kind of do the stuff because nobody's doing this for free. Man. <laughs> Nobody. And I'm sorry. I will not apologize. <laughs> It's like the, it's like Gingrich and two women. Really, in oh, my I lifetime. Know. Yeah, talk about that. That's theater to me. Yeah. That's just really, no, Gingrich, Giuliani, that these guys, these really icky, horrible conservatives, get dames. Yeah. Is power that corrupt? It, are they that, or that seductive? Or that seductive? I mean, well, I know and, stand up comedy ain't. Oh, oh, come on now, no, Lou. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, you no, guys you, always when do you wish well. upon Give a me star. A break. No, it doesn't Give happen. Me a break. It doesn't you happen. You do too. No. no. No, not too, no. <laughs> Joseph Alsop had better luck than Louis yeah, Blackford. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm going to Russia next week. All right, now. baby. <laughs> <laughs> On the basis of that story. <laughs> All right. Uh, nah. Nancy, it's your turn to be a critic. I know there's a, a play that won the Pulitzer Prize last year that's getting a lot of attention on Broadway now, Clybourne Park. I saw it, and I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. It, it, and I think what I really loved as much as the play is the audience and how they reacted. And... I've told jokes about the differences between, I don't know if you know about this, Lewis, white audiences and black audiences. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when white audiences are seeing very important plays with black characters, they get very quiet, you know, because yeah. they're seeing a black play. <laughs> and with black audiences, they'd be like, go girl, you know, whatever. And in this one, the white audiences and the black audiences were kind of like, whoa, whoa, you know. <laughs> It's, it's wonderful. What's it about? What's it Okay, so uh, the first part of the play takes place in 1959, and we're actually in the house that the characters from A Raisin in the Sun are going to move into, this black family moving to a predominantly white neighborhood in Chicago. And there's a family that's living there. We sort of hear a little bit about their story. There's a maid. There's her husband. Certain things come on. And, and one character from A Raisin in the Sun who's trying to stop the sale, he's the one that is, is carried across. The white guy. Kind the of white guy. The white neighborhood, don't let these black yeah. people in. Yeah, so we sort of see the flip side of what, what this family is going to be walking into and, and the kind of, like, a scary situation. Cut to the second act, 50 years later, it's turned into a predominantly black neighborhood, right. and a white family is moving in and sort of gentrifying, which is a word I've always hated. I just... There's got to be a better way to describe that, but I guess there's not. And um, they're facing their own set of circumstances about the race flipping, the race, the, the character of the neighborhood flipping over. Right. It's, it's brilliant. Uh, Bruce Norris, is that the player? Yeah, yeah. It's the best piece of theater I've, I've seen to uh, provoke a real conversation about race, mm. like Lewis and I always have. Yes. We're always talking about race. Yeah. Well, we I can't are... remember what color I am. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I wore the black and white just as a reminder. <laughs> just to oh, help my. you. Q, <laughs> ebony, <laughs> and ivory. <laughs> what a horrible song. But and I, I really always loved Stevie Wonder and Paul McCartney. What were they thinking? That was just like the most condescending was, kind yeah. of... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Racial hearing. Uh -huh. sort of sorry. Yeah. Lewis, any, any plays that you've seen lately? out there that you're, you're interested no. in? No. <laughs> Why? Uh, I have a rich, full life. <laughs> uh, my life is a play. <laughs> and you're going to be, wait, you're going on a, on a theater cruise. The play Don't building, push right? that yet. Yo, oh, boy, come you on. Are. on. I, I, oh, uh, so look, now you're doing, you're doing cruise ships now, right? Is that, that's, that's... My career is moving in. Uh, I, that's why I can't go out and do, I've got a lot of stuff happening. Uh, outside, I actually don't remember. I did, uh, I really don't remember the last thing I saw, which is sad. But I liked it. But you're coming back to Broadway yourself in the fall, we hope. Yeah. With yeah. your one-man show. Is yeah. this, are you going on the cruise ship to sort of, is this your out-of-town trial, your test? No, out? no, it'll, this will be afterwards. <laughs> yeah. This will be my out-of-town out vacation. Like... <laughs> and you're going on Rosie O'Donnell's cruise ship, am I? No, no. no. <laughs> you're going on the Love Boat? That no, that's stars? really spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> I literally panic, the, the panic game. went through my soul. Louis <laughs> <laughs> Black, Louis Black in a night of a thousand lesbians. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. To you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. And, oh, wow. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to be uh, I'm, 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 What can I say? And, and then there'll be notes and they'll write stuff. Oh, right. Not only she don't go to the theater, but that thing you said about lesbians. I know. I'm just. It's extraordinary. Uh, but no, it's a Playbills cruise. Oh, Playbill. I'm sorry. Yeah, which is kind of still. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got three minutes left. Let's uh, let's switch to uh, politics. Uh, let's switch to politics. Exactly. All right. Theater, theater, theater. I know precisely. Now, um, if you were advising Mitt Romney <laughs> on how to just loosen up a little bit and, and to tell a joke, have you noticed that Mitt Romney has a hard time with the rhythm of a joke? It's yes. not only Mitt Romney. It really is all conservatives. They, their idea of humor is being nasty, 
like calling someone a slut right. or saying something mean or saying they want to kill the president. <laughs> I'm going to blow his brains out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Ted Nugent, I, I, they don't, I don't, I, have you met, honest to God, have you BGL met, it's, is he really funny? Seriously, funny. okay. And he's written a lot. Michael's of funny a conservative. Books. I'm a conservative. Uh, I'm oh, hilarious. Oh, you're funny. I'm surprised. Dennis Miller is funny. He, yeah, but he's I, less funny now he's than less he was. Funny as a conservative. But, but I, but we, he was on the. Da- I have to say, he was on the Daily Show. When you just go, okay, we're going to be funny. He can do and it. And he's out of the radio. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Bam, bam. I mean, to the point where right. John and I both thought, you know, and it was jokes that I normally. I mean, he found a twist on stuff, and it was stuff that I would go, I'm not, I don't agree with you at all, but that's funny. Okay, all right. Well, then I stand corrected, yeah, no, I have not found any. There are, it's, 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 it a, tougher, to it's a tougher road to hoe sometimes um, for them. It, but it is in terms of, I think conservatives can be funny. I just don't think it's tough within the, the, the realm of... Uh, of uh, Their lifestyle? Of poli- no, politics. No, the politics. Because there's, there, it, it, there's a sense that there's no empathy. That's with, right. And that's, that's right. the problem. And I mean, for like, for instance, for, uh, for Mitt Romney, I might say, like, you know, listen to some soul music or something just to literally <laughs> loosen him up. But you saw that who let the dogs out moment where he's like, woof, woof, with a bunch of black kids. It's just it's bad. And, it's and, really and, bad. And, and, as, and as Gail Collins continues to point out and uh, <laughs> is his laugh. <laughs> Freakish at best. Uh, H, as my friend says, John Bowman, H E H E H E. All right, but listen, I, it's, uh, I guess I don't think Obama's the funniest guy in the world. Uh, he doesn't, but he's but more he's relaxed got, about yeah. the delivery. And the delivery and the timing and, and the ease with it, I think. Really. And you know where there else it just to defend, and I can't believe I'm in the, I'm sitting here defending conservative humorists. <laughs> yeah, what uh, the but, hell, Lou? But no, uh, William F. Buckley was seriously funny. Well, he was, okay, he was brilliant. Funny. Buckley, but yeah. but these are people. Anyone who basically, but there is were some, some empathetic could, but, conservatives. But you, but you also have to have someone who is conservative thought. Yes. That there's, that, that, that I get that. I mean, that I, I fully understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, and those guys. We're not seeing a lot of guys like that. No, what we're, what, is, what we're seeing is. What we're seeing is. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Well, you know, you know the great William F. Buckley line when he ran for mayor and they asked him, what will you do, Mr. Buckley, if you win? And he said, demand a recount. <laughs> that's funny. That is. Yeah, that's that's funny. And Ronald, that Ronald funny. Reagan was funny, too. Reagan Ronald was Reagan. funny. He was funny. And, he was and, funny. And, and so was um, Barry Goldwater. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, what it was fun. He actually was. I saw that documentary, Mr. Conservative. He's a riot. He was a riot. He's a laugh a minute. He was a laugh a minute. It it sounds, hey, but we would have well, been we would have been in some sort of <laughs> inferno <laughs> under his Politically, leadership. But we'd have been laughing. Well, all I know. Way. Yeah, as soon as we were watching the city he of New York burn down. He was in the down. military, though. You know. I mean, he. he no, had a no, but but he. That was funny. Now, we got to. I got to end it, but I, I have to say, I know you guys. Funny. I know you guys are both on the left, but the way you are extolling these conservatives, are the you left. are you moving to the right? No, I'm, I'm not. not. I'm in the I'm, middle. I'm I'm way way left, but I'm I appreciate. In the middle. Who is <laughs> I'm in the middle. Who's in the middle also? Well, uh, nobody. Oh, I'm it. I'm You're directly in the middle. In You're the an middle. island. I am. I'm in the middle. There's uh, there's uh, uh, there's not a lot. But and then, it would, it would, it would be nice. I, I'm. What I really believe yes. is psychotic in terms of politics, right. really off the charts. What I believe in terms of the United States and the way in which we live and what we have to become, it's the middle. There's no denying it. There's no discussion of it. You have to get people to sit down. You take X amount of ideas from you just, they have to negotiate. I don't want to hear what they have to say anymore. I have no interest in it. You go and do that. When we elect somebody to the student council, <laughs> are we hoping that they'll come back and have a discussion about what the prom float's going to be? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you, that's why we elect these sons of bitches. I know. So that they can go into a room and then they can come out and go, here's the compromise. I will say this. I think things have gotten so messed up that personally, I want to get more involved in politics. I mean, I've been on the Screen Actors Guild Board of Directors for nine years, and that, and not Reagan. I'm not trying to like run for president, but I got. T- I'm getting tired of friends of mine on the progressive end who sit and whine and talk about things not happening fast enough. Right. There's this kind of um, Veruca Salt mentality. The, I want it now, now, and no one is willing to put in any time to get yeah, things yeah. done. Yeah. So I, that's that. I'm yeah. inspired by that. So. And I'm inspired the fact that I'm going to be on Rosie's cruise. <laughs> <laughs> And I will turn some minds, some minds and hearts. Oh, man. See? see. <laughs> <laughs> you comedians, you well, can do well, it, Well, yeah, I'm looking for change. That's your audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nancy, what do you got coming up? Well, I'm still a contributor on CBS News Sunday morning. Yes. So the, always, the, on Island, by the way, 
uh, own sophistication and culture. It is a great show. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And actually, I've been on it now 10 years, which is another uh, mind spinner. Absolutely. And I like the idea of you going into politics. I want to. All I think right. it could be fun. And Lewis, when you finish the cruise ship circuit and you uh, start uh, doing <laughs> professional things again, uh, what is it that you're working on? But no, we're, this uh, summer we have uh, we have uh, one slight hitch in Seattle. Right. Starring, but amazingly enough, is uh, one of the one of the actresses. This is a great story. It was Marianne Owen, who uh, who was a, an actress who came out of Yale. I went to school with her. I've known her for thirty five years. So the, the, she, when I wrote the play, would have um, would have been one of the younger sisters and is now the mother. Wow. In the play, and that'll give you. And let's end yeah. on a moment of mortality, <laughs> because if you really want to get a sense of being mortal, is just hang around the theater for thirty-five years. And oh yeah, <laughs> go from playing the daughter That's to the right. mother. You go yeah, from playing I'm the right. daughter to the mother, yeah. and you go, wow. I hope I have. I hope there is a health care plan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid, Lois, so your 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 Hamlet may have passed you, but I'm looking forward to your King Lear. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy Giles, Lewis Black, you guys are terrific. You're welcome on Theater Talk anytime. Thank we'll be you. back next week. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you can sign up for viewer updates at theatertalk.org or you can Twitter us. Our thanks to the Friends of Theater Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Alan S. Gordon Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, Carrie J. Freeze, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you and good night.